Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Next one is the multiple sequence alignment. So, we discussed three different uh, methods. One is a statistical method, so first one, and we discussed about information theory, GAR method, and the hydro obesity profiles, right, based on the patterns in hydro obesity. These are based on single sequence. If we have one sequence, we do not need anything else, just see the values, the preference of residues or the profiles we can predict. Later on, we realize that instead of using a single sequence, if you obtain the information similar to that particular sequence, that may increase the prediction performance. So, they started to use the multiple sequence alignment, right. How to get the multiple sequence alignment? Take your sequence, get the homologous sequences, and you can align, right. What program we use to get the multiple sequence alignment? Cluster, cluster W, right. Cluster W, cluster omega, we can use for the multiple sequence alignment. So, for example, this is your sequence. You obtain the homologous sequences and then you can get this multiple sequence alignment, right. Now, you get several sequences and finally, you can see multiple sequence alignment. And if you look into the sequence, some of them are conserved. Right? What is the conservation? A conserved of same residue or same position, right. For example, take the first residue, it is highly conserved and some cases it is variable. This is P is conserved here and O is conserved here and some positions you can see the variability, right, changes uh, with the several residues for example, here, here I, K, V, right and yes, there is very many residues, right, they change the variability. So, if it is highly conserved, then the possibility of the prediction performance is high, right, because we take the same from different sequences. So, what to do? When you make this sequence alignment, right, we have the multiple sequence alignment, there are different ways to do. First case is we can get the GAR values, right. That means, we have the frequency of occurrence matrices. So, get the frequency of occurrence, right, for the helix, stand and coil for the different residues in the sequence alignment. And then, you can see which one is the highest one, we can predict. Here, the confidence increases if it is highly conserved. Why? Uh, because we get the same information for the same sequence, right. In that case, we can, if you add up all these things, we will get a high value. So, with highly conserved, you will get the high confident values. So, if it is insertion deletion, where is it, there is a gap, then we it says value 0 and others they get the table for the helix and coil and turn and get the values and finally, look at for the 4 different states, then you can predict. If the confidence is very high for based on the conservation score, right, between 0 and 1, if it is 1, then you can get the high confidence than the value of 0. So, the, the first predict is Z pred. This is the first secondary sequence predictor using multiple sequence alignment and using this one. Then there is another way to use a multiple sequence alignment for predicting the second secondary structures, right. For example, right, if you have this multiple sequence alignment, this is unknown. And for example, if you get these numbers from known, that means you search your own sequence with a blast with a data set of PDB sequences right with the known structural structure sequences. And if you could do this alignment, the first one is unknown and all other sequences we know the secondary structures. For example, we take a second sequence, in we, we change this sequence into secondary structure right. That means, the sequence will be right for example, if you have the sequence, this is your unknown sequence. So, you align with the known values, known structures. Then if you have the different alignment, align, align sequences, these are the aligned sequences. And for each aligned sequence, you have a secondary structure assignment. For example, this is helix.
So, for each cases we have the second decimal assignment and see the values here if it is helix, 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 helix then you can assign this value for this. So, for each positions if you know the have the known secondary structures you can assign the values and then you can get the secondary structure for your query sequence. So, if the accuracy is high you can see the conservation is very high other way around if the conservation is high for example, if this highly same residues and in this case you can see the prediction values with the high accuracy. So, the alignment score increases or the multiple sequence alignment is highly confident and then the accuracy increases. So, they did for several proteins with the homologous sequences and try to evaluate the performance and see the performance which are the sequences which are highly aligned they have higher performance than the residues which are in the lower performance right. This is currently in the research problem we have the issues the disorder region because it is very difficult to get the proper alignment. So, it is very difficult to predict this secondary structures when they form with the any of the complexes. So, now there is the method called J prat this is the one of the earliest methods they used the multiple sequence alignment. It takes the any of these amino acid sequence the sequence sequence and if you give make prediction right this will give you the sequence alignment for any given sequence right as well as secondary structure right. For example, if you run your own sequence so this is your multiple sequence alignment and here you can see the predicted method ok. Here this stands for helix. helix this arrow stands for strand. So, you can see the multiple sequence alignment several residues are highly conserved and if the, cons the conservation score is high then you can see the prediction accuracy is also very high they can get this information. So, we discussed about the propensity and the information theory hydrophobic profiles and the multiple sequence alignment right. If you see the performance each method you can see the improvement of performance right first we started with the 60 percent 65 percent 68 percent and the multiple sequence alignment if you get good alignment you can get up to 65 to 70 percent. So, now they try to put all the information in the machine learning right because here we try to understand right which feature is important how far each feature performs in the second second prediction. So, you add all the information and for the machine learning techniques right machine learning techniques is just the mapping of the input features with the output. For example, if you have 100 proteins all the 100 proteins we know the assignment segment 5 to 10 is helix A to 12 is strand and so on and here we have the information center residue we know neighboring residues we know patterns we know preferred residues we know we give all the information. Then the machine learning is a kind of black box it, it maps this input sequence with the output and assign weights to maximize the performance right. In the later classes we will uh, discuss more details. So, they give the information regarding the sequence alignment right for the evolution information and they use any of the machine learning techniques there are several techniques available neural network support vector machines right. So, many methods available. So, for example, if you take the linear neural networks it learned the known information that is what we give as input right. For example, amino acid pattern or any neighboring based information and they try to learn this information they will also use the different windows they can use 3, 5, 7, 9 and then optimize the windows and optimize the parameters or any properties to predict the secondary structures. How it does? So, take the input sequence this is your protein sequence for example, if we have this K T L V M T S A V then we get the profile matrix right how to get the profile matrix? P S S M right you get the multiple sequence alignment when the multiple sequence alignment you have the preferred uh, residues at any particular position. So, we get the values then they take the window length right they can use different window lengths right. So, for example, if there is 13 there is minus 6 to plus 6 right the all the information they take and put everything in the machine learning for example, neural networks it will give you the probability of each residue to be in helix or in strand or in coil. So, different if for example, if you take three states right it will give you the probability if this is the case ok central residues 3 1 in ok these are the neighboring residues and these are the preferred residues and so on. It can map so that this probability of helix is uh, 0.5 strand is 0.2 and coil is 0.1 right. Then we can see from the voting you can see the best one 
this could be in the helix or strand or coil and so on. So, here this is an example. So, here you have the input sequence. So, this is central residue, this is y, right? The input layer they have the 21 values, 20 values for the 20 different amino acids, right? One for the padding sequence, let them align the next one, or they can also use it for insertion deletions. So, y is here, right? So, they put one here, right? And all others that is 0. Likewise, then they have some hidden layers. Here is a place they train your data. So, they assign different weights, right? So, put either here or here, right? Different weights they do between this i and j, right? And based on these weights, they give the values for the output. What is the preference or the preferred probability of that particular ST y in helix or in the strand or in coil? For example, if you give this 1, this is a probability 0, this is probability 0, then we can say this residue. L is in helix. So, likewise they do it for each not residue L, this residue is for example, if it is y then this is you can see this are y, right. For each residue we can get the probability, from this probability you can see whether this can be helix or strand or coil. So, this is the server, right. So, it takes the amino acid sequence right as an input right and they takes the information that you obtain from the sequence then they give the desired output right this is your sequence okay and here you can see this is your secondary structure so the phd is one of the highest performing methods right so it could achieve an accuracy of about 70 percent at that time in in 19 90s right 1993 right right they use the neural network to map the information right and to predict the secondary structures at highest accuracy so now if you see the growth from the statistical methods to the machine learning right you can see the growth in the accuracy and finally they could be able to combine different information in the neural network to get the highest accuracy now the next one is okay so they have different different methods and what are the methods you take right the performance is around 60 to 70 percent. So, now they try to use the consensus for example, if you have 10 15 prediction methods take any amino acid sequence try to use different methods and predict the secondary structures and see are there any tendency of different methods to predict the same residue in same secondary structure. In this case they take a particular sequence right for example, if we have one sequence here use a Javan Fassman and you get the values get the secondary structures for example, this is E E E H H H H C C C C C H H H H then we use GAR and we get the secondary structures right for example, it will give you like this. Then we use a profile and multiple sequence alignment right and we use the neural network we get the values. Then compare these values for example, this region if all methods could predict helix or majority of voting if for example, if you have uh, 11 methods and if you 8 methods predicts a particular structure like helix or strand then we can assign that residue previous to be in helix or strand right. So, the now we can compare the experimental data with the known database right and see how far we can improve. So, if you do this consensus method or the joint prediction methods they found that this method could improve the performance compared with any individual methods right this is one. And the second aspect they can also do the output of each sequence right we will get the secondary structures right and this can be the input of any machine learning. For example, if you take this this can be the input of input information again they put this also input information instead of giving the sequence they give the output obtained from the sequence and they train and see what is the possibility of having helix or strand or coil 
then at the, the method will train and see the, the first residue could have the probability of helix or standard coil right this guy this way you can do. So, how to do this first you can see any sequence ok this is your input sequence right and they use different methods for example, jpred jpred is based on what MSA multiple sequence alignment right they also later on use the other information right for example, the machine learning and all right. So, mainly is developed initially based on multiple sequence alignment. So, J product predicts this region is a helix the re helical regions then take the GAR what is your information. information theory right based on information theory. So, they predicted this as a beta strand and here this is the helix right some coil right and the whole segment they predicted as helix or strand or coil and this another method PhD right this is based on neural networks. So, this is the values here for example, I show only 3 methods currently several methods are available and you can use as many methods as possible depending upon the performance right and then see are there any consensus for example, this region right for this region if you see all the methods predict as helix. So, there is no conflict so you can use this region as helix and this region if you see this 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 region. So, here this predicts as helix right this predicts as helix but this predicts as coil, but if you take the majority of voting out of 3 2 predicted as helix. So, we can take this as helix, but we see the confidence ok this may be predicted the higher confidence than this region because here here the probability is less compared with the this region right this helical region. Like I say we see here you can see this uh, predicted as E. So, this also assigned as E some cases is totally different with this as helix and this predicted as coil and this predicted extended state beta strand. In this case we do not know which one is this one is confusing which may, here we use only 3 cases this is where it is confusing. If you use 10 or 11 methods then you will have some sort of numbers and based on the numbers we can assign the secondary structures and see which segment can be correctly predicted right compared to the experimental data. So, this is a complete sequence and we will get the values and this method is called the consensus or you can see this is a joint prediction right or the uh, uh, based on this voting the ensemble based method. Second one we can use the meta prediction there are several several methods available. So, what they do they first take a sequence for example, if we take uh, the sequence and predict the secondary structures they use this information right as the input and train this data using any machine learning and you get the output. In this case it will consider this type of situations and they try to maximize the results because we know the experimental data right to see how to assign the values. This meta predictions usually works better than other methods any other individual methods which are reported in the literature. So, there are several methods which can individually predict the main advantage of individual prediction method is we can explain why the method predicts well why the method fails because if the propensity is high and the region is beta strand right we know that this is high high values because of that high value it is wrongly predicted even if it is high values and if it is helix then we can say here high propensity this is the reason it could correctly identify the helix. Likewise, the information theory or the profiles we can explain when you go with the machine learning and go with this meta predictions we get better results, but the problem is it is very difficult to explain why this method this protein the prediction is very high why this accuracy is low and so on. Summarizing we discussed on various methods right what are the various methods we discussed right first one is the propensity right. So, or we can say Chavan Pesman and we discussed about information theory Garnier right G R. then we put the hydrophobicity profiles here we can predict with the single values as well as with the average windows right and then we discussed about the multiple sequence alignment right MSA. here also have two two ways we can assess the multiple sequence alignment either take the parameters from the GOR or you can get the information from the experimental data. So, you can predict the secondary structures right 
So, also they found that if the alignment grows highly conserved then the prediction performance also increases. So, j prod is the one or z prod they first used multiple sequence alignment for predicting secondary success and then we discussed about the neural networks right or you can see the machine learning. Right here they take the input information and they try to predict the output right that is a secondary structure. Then finally, we discussed about the consensus here two types of consensus methods one is based on ensembles and the ensemble based method how it works majority, majority of voting they take the several methods right and get the voting which one has the highest one. So, that is a secondary structure helix or strand or coil right in the case of the meta predictions what they do? They train, they train the output of the each single method and finally, use the information for predicting the desired output right this is how they do. So, now at the present scenario right you can see the variations of the performance and we could see about 75 to 80 percent accuracy right now we can predict the secondary structures. So, currently okay, due to the advancements in the computing right say the big data with large amount of data and deep learning they are trying to use deep learning in almost all prediction purposes including protein secondary circuit prediction right they are trying to map this information right and then try to improve the prediction performance. So, we discussed about the secondary structures in the next classes we will go through the tertiary structures right. So, what are the major information we obtain from protein 3D structures right what are the various databases and how can we use the information available in protein 3D structures right to derive any properties and how can we use these properties with the different applications for the predictions or how to understand the folding and the binding and so on ok. Thanks for your kind attention.